Hello everyone and welcome to Alilic and Benzelic Reactivity. Let's get right into it. So what's the difference between Alilic and Benzelic and what does it mean? So a Benzelic carbon, right, refers to the carbon that is attached to a benzene ring or a phenyl group, right? So this carbon is your Benzelic carbon, okay? Right? So if I drew a carbon here, this would also be the benzylic carbon. The allylic carbon is similar. It's just the carbon that is adjacent to the double bond. The keyword adjacent, it's not part of the double bond, it's adjacent to. So if this is the carbons that make up the double bond, it's the one right next to it. All right, let's go into the recap with um, carbon hydrogen bonds, right? The strength recap. So the higher the disassociation energy on this chart, the stronger the bond. This makes the hydrogen least reactive or least susceptible to removal, okay? So pretty much the stronger the bond, the less likely it is for that hydrogen to be react or be deprotonated, all right? The lower, the more likely. What causes things what, well, what causes uh, this dissociation energy in the first place? Well, it's basically the stability of the negative charge once the hydrogen leaves. Once, if that negative charge can be stabilized very well, or that carbocation can be stabilized very well, you would have lower dissociation energy. In this case, we're going to deal with carbocation, uh, carboanions, anions, right? So, if hydrogen is deprotonated, for example. then you are going to get carbanion. So the more stable carbanion, lower dissociation energy in this case. So practice problem number one, which is the most reactive hydrogen? Well, in this case, we have three hydrogens to work with. We have this alkanol hydrogen, or alkynol. We have this benzylic hydrogen, and we have this Benzylic hydrogen, but there's two. Well, I hope you either chose this guy or this guy. Why? Because, well, this dude is a benzylic hydrogen with only one benzyl group, but this one has two for stability. So let's go back. We know alkyl groups, they stabilize at 544, while benzyls, 372. So this guy is going to be our most reactive hydrogen right here. Because the stability of these two benzyl groups greatly outranks the stability of one alkynyl group and one uh, benzyl group. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, now let's talk about allylic bromination with Br2. So when we have an uh, alkene, right? If we brominate, it's not ideal because we consume the alkene, right? So we kind of can't perform alkyl allylic bromination with simply Br2. We get the this sort of dibromo product and then enantiomer. So what do we, what's the solution? What do we do? Well, we use what's called N-bromosuccinamide or NBS. So NBS that gives a very low level concentration of Br. So we're not concerned about the bromination of the alkene, right? Uh, and essentially, one Br is only one is added at a time. And it's added to the allylic or benzylic positions, right? So you need that sort of position. Otherwise, this won't work. So let's look into uh, more into this reaction. We can also use this to form bromohydrins. So bromohydrin is basically just NBS with water. You get this racemic mixture. The stereochem is always trans. So I'm not sure if you'll need this, but important to know. What's the exception? Well, as I said, you need at least one allylic or benzylic hydrogen. Otherwise, this reaction won't occur because this bromine really is going to uh, swap places with a hydrogen. Okay? Or more accurately, you're going to form a radical from that hydro carbon-hydrogen bond. That's why we talked about the carbon-hydrogen bond strength recap in the beginning. So no reaction will occur if you don't have one allylic or benzylic hydrogen, as in here. There is no uh, allylic or benzylic hydrogen here, here, or here. 
All right, guys, let's do a brief review of the mechanism here. So the first step is you form your BR2. So BR2 is formed, and you get BR2 and this sort of byproduct. Second step is initiation. So this BR2 forms BR dot. Third step, you get this propagation. This is a step with which you draw the most stable resonance structure, or in this case, most stable double bond, right? So this is where you want to do some rearrangements. Step four, you would get propagation two to add your bromine in the, your final product. Let's go over some problem solving tips. So the first thing I would do is I would form the most stable radical, right? It's the same as carbocation stability. Most stable radical would be the same thing as the most stable carbocation. For the kinetic product, you just do what you did for thermo and kinetic products, right? Kinetic dire attaches directly to where the radical is. Thermal product, you need to draw the most stable structure or the double bond's most stable position. Please remember to add only one bromine total. Let's go over a practice problem together. All right, so let's quickly go through this practice problem. What do we do first? So the first thing you want to do is you want to form the most stable radical. Where would that go? Well, we have two positions. Right? The allylic radical is going to be the most stable. Well, we have two allylic positions. We have one right here. We have one right here. So try and think about which position it would go to. Well, it's going to be the top one because it is more stable. Why more substituted carbon? Okay? We form this. So we can draw a resonance structure where essentially form this double. Okay, let me draw a better arrow than that. There we go. So we basically move over the radical and the double bond, and we make this. So this is the most stable double bond position, OK? Finally, we just add our bromine. to get our final answer. So once again, similar to the other problems, pretty much what we do, form the most stable radical. If they're asking for the major thermal product, you've got to do your resonance and then add your bromine. Let's go through another example. Let's draw the most stable thermodynamic product from the following reaction. All right, so you might be tempted in this case to brominate multiple times. But remember, NBS only adds once, and we're going to add to the most stable position. First thing, form the most stable radical. It's going to be this benzylic radical here. Even though this is still benzylic, and this has no hydrogen, so we wouldn't add here at all. This benzylic position is better than this one, just because it is more substituted. And then you add your bromine. Hopefully that's clear. All right, so let's go over this problem together. So let's draw the major thermodynamic product from the following reaction. Once again, the first step, we want to form the most stable radical. So we are going to add it at this position right here. And the reason for that is because you have both an allylic and benzylic carbon there versus just a benzylic carbon here. Okay, so that is the better position. So we're forming the most stable thermodynamic product. So from here, we can actually make this product even more stable by doing resonance. So through resonance, we can move our um, radical over. So let's draw the resonance structure there. And then from here, you would just add bromine on. So this is the more conjugated molecule versus rather than just adding bromine immediately from there. So that would give us the kinetic, but this gives us the thermodynamic product. So this is the main product. So hopefully this makes sense. Let's continue. So here are our reaction two. So we're using KMnO4 and we're oxidizing. So essentially in all of these, you need a benzylic hydrogen in order to oxidize with KMnO4, all right? So in essence, everything will be oxidized. Primary, secondary, tertiary, except for 
quaternary benzylic carbons will be oxidized. Um, even allylic will be oxidized. Uh, even like if you already have a ketone, it'll be oxidized. So this this is useful if you want to make carboxylic acid. Um, this will also be oxidized. This alkenyl group will be oxidized, and even this sort of double ring system will be oxidized to create this uh, interesting dicarboxylic acid benzene. All right. So note the reaction arrow. So this is the re proper reaction arrow. It wasn't in the previous slide just to save space, but make sure that when you write your reaction, this is what you write. All right, let's do a practice problem together. So draw the product for the following reaction. Okay. So I know this is a horrible and ugly molecule, but the whole point of this problem is to show that KMnO4 is very powerful and it can be used to oxidize a wide variety of molecules. So let's begin. So, all right, so let's say I'm gonna say that this carbon right here is the same as this carbon, just for reference, okay? So this is carbon number one, carbon number one. And I'm gonna go clockwise. So two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six. So on carbon one, you're simply going to form carboxylic acid previously stated. Nothing special there. Same applies for carbon number two. But well, I could draw it better than that. Carbon number three, however, won't be affected. No benzylic hydrogens. Carbon uh, number four, you will get another carboxylic acid just because um, this, even though this is a ring, it's not directly attached. Uh, as previously stated, it's not like here, this is not the same. So it's more so kind of similar to this, sort of a double substituted carbon on the outside, which is two methyls. So at the same time, that is, is how it's gonna look like here. You're gonna get this carboxylic acid. And then this is going to become a carboxylic acid as well. And this is also going to become a carboxylic acid. So you're going to get basically benzylic carboxylic acids on all positions, except the one with the tertiary group that's attached. All right, hopefully that makes sense. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll hope to see you in the next video.